Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the Karna cycle. And what I did draw here uh, to save some time for you is this is a steam power plant, right? So I had a heat source. I discussed this in a couple segments because I'm not going to explain the same thing again. But I have a heat source that is the QH. This is my steam power plant or a heat engine, right? Operating this. This is the direction you see there over here. Um, and I have a QL and I have a verb net output from here. W net out. Again, some portion of the turbine output is uh, used to uh, drive the pump, okay? First, let's start with the Carnot cycle. The Carnot cycle, or Carnot principle, states that we will have the maximum efficiency possible from this particular cycle if all four processes, I will uh, number them, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, and again 41, right? So I, I keep, like I start 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5 or 1, right? 1 and 5 are the same in this particular case. If all of these four processes are reversible, if all four processes are reversible, I call this the Carnot cycle. And as I mentioned in the previous uh, segment, this will have the maximum theoretical efficiency that I ob obtained from this engine, heat engine, okay? Um, and one thing is, if this is reversible as the name recommends, I can actually go from, and that becomes a Carnot heat pump or refrigerator. So I put the same amount in, now this QL and QHs are reversed in direction, okay? So that is the Carnot heat pump or refrigerator. Now I want to talk a little bit more about this uh, process from 1 to 2, okay? In order for it to be reversible, what do I have to do, okay? And I'm going to call this, uh, let's actually write it in here, 1 to 2, this needs to be an reversible, which it comes as a no surprise, it needs to be isothermal, okay, process. And in this process, what I have is, I have this, uh, let's say that this is a TH, okay, I discussed this in the previous segment, so the heat source is TH plus delta TH, a very, very finite, very, very small difference between the temperature here and temperature there, okay. And you can see it's isothermal, it keeps at, at TH all the time, okay, because the heat source is slightly zero, like I gave the example 25, 25 plus already 25.000001, okay. So whenever I, I lose some heat, a little bit of a heat is lost in the boiler, what I do is I add slightly more from here to here, okay, and this delta is so small that I can have this uh, reversible process, okay. That's the process number one adiabatic turbine okay so this is a turbine and this turbine needs to be two to three reversible and adiabatic process okay in this particular process you remember from the previous uh, module five we talked about the turbine what happens is it's a adiabatic which means i don't have any heat loss from this which may be an okay assumption and the temperature of the uh, fluid this is the working fluid that I have here, decreases from the TH to TL because now this is going to go in, let's put it in here, this is going to go in as TL and this is going to be TL minus delta TL, right? Um, so now I, I go from TH to TL in the tur turbine, that's how I extract the energy, right? Now it doesn't come as a surprise, so this is different in terms of 1 to 2, it's the same thing, 3 to 4, this is reversible. Isothermal. Do you see what I said? Uh, they are pretty much the same. The direction of the process, um, you know, um, is different in this case. What I do is I lose some, a little bit from TL to TL minus a little, little small, okay? Like 25, 24.9999999, right? So I lose slightly. The, the temperature goes up in the condenser slightly and I just dump it. I just dump it slightly, small, small intervals, okay? It's the same thing as I have a piston with a mass. I'm shaving the mass slightly, okay? Um, so, okay, and the 4 to 1 is now just like uh, 2 to 3, then 4 to 1 will be still reversible and still a diabetic process. Um, and you can guess over here is by using a pump, I will be able to increase my TL, uh, or rather the temperature from TL to TH, so I can keep going and on and on and on, okay? Obviously, this is a not existing in real life, okay? Um, so I, I don't have to say that. It doesn't exist in real life, okay? Um, and we do cover these concepts much more detail in thermodynamics too, so I'm just scratching the surface over here. But I want to talk about what the Carnot says, okay? This is a name. This is the person who invited this in 1820, something like that. 
Okay? And what uh, the first uh, principle says that the efficiency of an irreversible heat engine, and every heat engine is irreversible, okay? The efficiency of an irreversible heat engine is less than the efficiency of the reversible one operating between the same reservoirs. So I have this uh, TH over here, I have this TL over here, so, and I have QH, this is my, let's put it that way, the direction wise, this is QL, this is W net out. What we are saying is the efficiency of the irreversible one will always be less than the efficiency of the reversible one. So, as I mentioned in the previous segment too, this will be the maximum efficiency I can obtain. What if I, may, I get something where the efficiency is, uh, you know, the process that I have turns out to be greater than this reversible, okay? That is called impossible, okay? Impossible. I can't have it. I have maximum efficiency as the reversible one, and the real efficiency is lower than the irreversible one, okay? And another principle that I'm going to use and actually show you is the efficiencies of all reversible engines operating between the two reservoirs are the same. So I only have one unique reversible efficiency, okay? And I'm going to write that. I'm not going to uh, go in detail because we do it in the second month, but second thermodynamics, but this will be, you remember this was uh, QL by QH. Do you remember that? Um, from the previous segments. For a reversible engine, Carnot showed that this QL will be like this. Reversible will be 1 minus TL by TH. So I simply go ahead and replace the QL by TLs. And that matches the second principle of the Carnot. Because now, this efficiency is purely depending on the TH and TL value. Okay? Um, so that is an important observation from what Carnot did. And I don't want to go into extreme depth in explaining this because it is beyond the scope, but um, you know, this is not the only way to define the reversible. They also did the logarithmic uh, scale too, but this is the most common one that stick that we use. Okay. But one thing I want to highlight is when I say TL and TH, it is we have to be extremely careful. These are um, absolute uh, temperatures. Temperatures. Okay. So if I'm using uh, SI, I'm going to have Kelvin. If I'm using Fahrenheit, I'm going to use Rankine. And I discussed this in much more detail in Module 1. Okay, so I'm not going to rehash the same thing. So then if I look at this equation in a little bit more depth, the maximum efficiency I obtain, let's say that typically in an internal combustion engine, let's say that the hot uh, temperature reservoir is 1000, that's realistic, and, you know, the atmosphere, or rather the, uh, you know, the outside temperature is 300 Kelvin, just 27 degrees C, depends on where you live. But if I operate an internal combustion engine in this manner, or a heat engine, right, what I do get is, let's see what the maximum efficiency will be. So the reversible efficiency will be 1 minus 300 by 1000, right? This is in Kelvin, this is in Kelvin, so the Kelvin will cancel. You can see in here, what do I get? I get, this is 0 0.3, right? 300 divided by this. 3 by 10, 0 0.3, so I get 70% maximum efficiency that I can obtain from a heat engine, as an example, okay? And what happens is, the goal in here, uh, you know, as an engineer, is the energy quality, we don't talk about quality in turn one, but I want to touch on open it, is that the quality of the heat energy is more when I have this goes to by, let's say, 1200 Kelvin, the efficiency will go up. If this goes down, then the efficiency will go down, okay? Um, same thing over here, if this number goes down, then I will be able to obtain more efficiency, okay? Um, for instance, if this was two, 200, right? If this was 200, which is kind of impossible because it's uh, very low uh, Kelvin, but if it's 200, then I get 80% efficiency. So now you can see that, uh, you know, there's a relationship between uh, this, this value. So I want to have this, my, this one as high as possible. All right, that's going to do it for the Carnot cycle. Thank you for watching this. Have a good day.